that looks so good. Now, you can't tell me that you're not going to try this recipe. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Bang Bang Soul Bowls. Today would be the first of a series that I would like to do, the first episode of a series that I would like to do that I am calling Vegan Soul Food Sundays. Today we are going to have a um, braised vegan short rib with some garlic cabbage steaks and some white rice so if you want to know how to make this recipe just stick around okay guys the first in many steps for this recipe we are going to um roast up some king oyster mushrooms i purchased these um king oyster mushrooms from my local Asia market. I think they are around like $3.99 a pound. Well, today they were $3.99 a pound. I got almost a pound of mushrooms and I paid, um, I think $3.50 for these. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut these in half the long way because we wanna create enough surface area for our braising um, roasting liquid to penetrate the mushrooms that way it'll go all the way through and it will provide great flavor so we're just going to put those face down on a lined um, baking sheet I just lined it with some aluminum foil and the next thing we're going to do is mix up our um, our braising liquid, our roasting liquid. So here we have about two um, tablespoons of chopped up green onions, and we have two tablespoons of um, oil, grapeseed oil, two tablespoons of water, a um, that is a teaspoon of onion powder, teaspoon of garlic powder, and here we have three tablespoons of um, brisket rub and this is the badia brisket rub seasoning that I am using to flavor this dish today um, if you cannot find a brisket rub seasoning you can do a combination of smoked paprika chili powder cumin um, white black paper white and black pepper oregano just some different seasonings that you um, would think that'll give it a good kick and then here we have two teaspoons of hickory smoke and then a teaspoon of um, salt. So we're just going to whisk, whisk. We're going to whisk this all together. Make sure we whisk that up good. And then we are just going to apply that to our oyster mushrooms. I'm just going to use a spoon, but if you have a brush, that'll work even better. then make sure you get both sides and I think I'm just going to go ahead on and use my hand so I can make sure that this is massaged in here good and that we get the flavor all the way throughout. And while we are doing this, your oven should be preheating at 325. And we're going to cover this with another piece of foil. 
and we are going to roast this in the oven for an hour. And while we are letting this roast, we are going to get our other components together to make our braised short ribs. Okay guys, um, the next thing we are going to do is start on our seasoning liquid for our, um, to season our vegan beef short ribs. Um, I have my induction top um, right here and I just put a little grapeseed oil in it and we are going to saute up um, a medium onion just sliced and about four um, cloves, four cloves of garlic that is um, chopped. It doesn't have to be um, finely minced or anything because we're going to put all of that into the blender. So, let's add that in. And we want to cook these until they are caramelized. We're not going to put our garlic in quite yet because we don't want that garlic to burn. So, usually the caramelization takes about 10 to 15 minutes. For um, onions, we're going to let all the sugars and everything develop. That's what um, makes it brown. That's what caramelizes the onions when the sugars are cooked out. So... I'm going to continue working with these for about 10 minutes and then I'll come back and show you guys what they look like and then we're going to add our garlic in at that time. Alright, so after about um, 10 minutes, this is what the onions look like. We're going to go ahead and add our garlic in. And we're just going to um, saute that. I have it on over medium heat. It's actually on um, 275. So I'm just going to keep moving this around um, the pot until I until the garlic gets fragrant. So I probably won't cook it for another five minutes just until I smell that garlic. So that usually takes about a minute or so for that to start blooming with its um, fragrance. So once we have this done, we're going to let it cool off a little bit. And then we're going to add um, our seasoning liquid to the blender. And then we're going to get our dry ingredients together for um, our short ribs. Alright guys, now since we have sauteed our... Um, onions and our garlic we are going to put together our seasoning liquid for our vegan short ribs um don't laugh at my blender i broke <laughs> i broke all the other blenders so the last one i have left is a smoothie blender and it will do the job just perfectly so don't add me below thank you <laughs> so to this um blender container we're going to add one and a half um cups of our beefless broth which you know i like to use the bouillon cubes so i use three bouillon cubes to that one and a half um cups of water that's two tablespoons of um grapeseed oil a fourth a cup of um seasoned soy sauce we're going to do a fourth cup of tahini if you don't have tahini you can use peanut butter um, whichever one you prefer and then I have a tablespoon of a thick like balsamic vinegar if you have been watching my videos for a while you will know that the vinegar cut the taste of the seitan a little bit then here we have a two teaspoons of marmite marmite is a um it's a yeast extract and it's used to kind of like impart umami flavors um and this is what the jar looks like I buy mine from the world market. That's the only place that I've been able to 
find it locally um, unless you guys want to purchase it online. Then we have two tablespoons of mushroom seasoning, um, which I find at my local Asian market. Usually I make my own, but I haven't been able to find any dried uh, mushrooms lately. So I just picked up a bag of that. And then we're going to add a um, tablespoon of beetroot um, powder and, well, beet powder. And what that does, that's going to, that's another like flavor bomb. It's going to kind of give the meat a minerally taste like you would find in a beef. Okay, the next we have two tablespoons of um, brown gravy mix. And then we have three tablespoons of our rub um, that we used before on our oyster mushrooms. And then we're going to have put a cup of spinach in there, which that will help with the color. And we're just going to blitz that all up until it is nice and smooth. I forgot one of the most important ingredients. I'm going to add the caramelized onions and garlic to that. And we're just going to blend it until smooth. Okay, everything has been blended and you see the color of our seasoning liquid. It's brown just like um, beef. So once we pour it into our dry ingredients, it'll look just like um, it'll have take on the same color as beef would once it's cooked. So for our dry ingredients, um, to this bowl, I am going to add one and three quarter cup of vital wheat gluten. Um, today, I am using Hoosier Hill Farms vital wheat gluten. I buy it off of Amazon. I go between that one and one from Medley Farms, and I think I like to use Anthony's as well. But this is what I had today, so that's what we're going to use. Um, this is a quarter cup of pea protein um, flour. You can use chickpea pea flour, but I don't like the taste of chickpea flour or garbanzo bean flour. So I just rather use a pea protein flour because it has a um, milder taste than chickpea flour does. And then we also have a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. So... We're just going to mix those all together and make sure they get incorporated. I don't know if we're going to need all of our seasoning liquid, but we do want this to be kind of um, wet. So we'll start off because I, let me see. In here, there is a little bit over three cups, but it's a little thick. So I'm going to start off with using half of it. And you can always taste your seasoning liquid and adjust um, the flavors before you add it. I smelled mine and it smelled really good. As you can see, I haven't um, added any salt to this mixture. And that's because of um, all the different components that we added. That was the, um, the rub, the soy sauce, the mushroom powder. The um, Marmite, all of those things have salt in them already, so we don't want to over salt this. I'm going to add a little bit more. So you just want to keep mixing this until you get to a good consistency. And because we, add, it's, we just didn't do straight up... Um, vital wheat gluten it's going to look a little different because we added the protein um the pea protein powder which will break up the gluten strands in the um and the vital wheat gluten a little bit so 
You're just going to keep mixing that until it gets all incorporated. I think I may add just a touch more liquid. Just a touch. I'll zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see how this is coming along so far. Just that much more. And you can, if you have any seasoning liquid left over, you can always freeze that and use it at a different time. We want to make sure we get all this gluten off this bowl because if you've been cooking with the vital wheat gluten, you know how it sticks to your, to your everything if you don't get it all incorporated together. you want your mixture to look and if you've been doing different different recipes you would see that different recipes call for your wheat and your wheat gluten to look different ways so that's how the wheat gluten is going to look for this recipe so now um, that we have the oyster mushrooms out of the oven what we're going to do is take two forks and we are just going to um, shred these up. They should be very easy to shred because they've been in the oven for a long, been in the oven for an hour. But you don't have to do them in the pan. You can take them off and do them on a cutting board or however you prefer. But just shred them up. I'm going to go ahead and finish. Oh, you really can't see that. I'm going to go ahead and finish shredding up the other um, mushrooms, and I'm going to cut. I'm going to come back and show you how we're going to put this all together. Okay, so this is how your mushrooms will look once you get them all um, shredded up, and make sure. You get when you get them all shredded up. You get that leftover um, seasoning that's on that um, that's on your pan. Make sure you scrape that up and um, put it in to your mushrooms. You want to you don't want to leave any of that flavor behind. So what we're going to do? We're going to take half of our vital wheat gluten mixture. And you can see that since we've let it rest that some of the gluten has developed in the um, in our dough. So you just want to spread that out as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we're just using the, the plastic wrap to make working on a surface a little bit easier. And then on top of that, we are going to add, okay, so here's my two little tricks that I use to impart some fat um, and texture into my um, vegan meats. I use rice paper strips, and it's just um, rice paper that I get from my local vegan store. I just put it into strips, and I got this, um, and then when it, once it's rehydrated, within the vital wheat gluten it acts as um, a fat and I got this tip from um, Corinne Rochelle I don't know if you guys have ever seen her videos um, on YouTube but I will make sure that I will link her 
down below. So we're going to just put a couple strips of that on there. Don't worry about it um, looking that way. Once we, um, once it gets incorporated, it's going to get rehydrated um, into our vitamin gluten. And I'm also going to use some dried bean curd sheets, which this is how they would look at the um, Korean or your Asian market. Um, I just take like a half a sheet or so and I just break them up into chips. So we're just going to add that into there as well. This is going to create another textural difference that you're going to see. It's going to make a lot of difference once we get this recipe all together. Next, we're going to layer on the um, oyster mushroom that we braised, that we roasted in the oven. This is another textural component. Um, it's going to make you think that there's like tendons and different types of um, things going throughout your um, your meat, your vegan meat here. So we're going to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put another sheet of plastic wrap over top. And we're just going to roll that in to um, our meat. We're going to add another layer of the wheat gluten, but we're just going to do this part first, kind of flatten it out. So I know it seems like a lot, but hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get the outcome that you want. You know what I'm saying? So essentially, we are just putting all these different components into our meat. We're just layering flavor here. That's what we're all about. Building and layering flavor. So once you have that first one done, we're going to fold this into three pieces like that. Okay? You see that? We're going to roll this out. It's okay if it comes off the plastic wrap because I am working on a clean um, cutting board. So I'm just going to add this other piece of plastic wrap on here. And we're going to flatten that out some more. Okay. See, now that we have that incorporated, we're going to add another layer of flavors. We're going to add more mushrooms. Okay. Oh, wait. We should have. Hold on. Hold on. Just take those off, guys. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Let me roll that out some more. I'm just not going to even bother using that plastic wrap. Let's go in with another layer of our rice paper. Some more of those bean curd chips. That's what we're going to call it. Then we're going to come in with some more of those oyster mushrooms. We 
I'm just going to go ahead on and finish that bowl off. And then we're going to go back in with the rest of our vital liquid. Okay, so we're just going to put pieces of that on top. You can stretch it out if you can. You know that gluten gets a little tricky once it starts setting up. So we're just layering all types of flavors here. We're just building, 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 and building upon flavors. And we are going to do the same process. We are going to go ahead and roll that and then um, fold it and then probably roll it again. All right. Sometimes you just got to work with the hands. My rolling pin ain't working for me right now. So, this is how we're going to do this. Then I'm going to fold it into thirds this way. And we're going to go ahead on and flatten that out. Now, what we are essentially doing, folding and rolling, we are kneading our dough. We are kneading our seitan <clears throat> and developing more of that gluten in it. So it's kind of hard to work on this table because it's lower than my thing, but you get the gist of it. I'm going to go take this in the kitchen and I'm going to finish working it, working it through, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I come back. Okay, so once um, you get your dough all rolled up, you want to kind of shape it into a square or whatever, and then you want to grease a um, a baking dish. I think this one is a 13 by 9, and you just want to make sure and press it out and make sure it gets into all the corners, and it's essentially the shape of your baking dish. Now we're going to go in with a sharp knife and cut it into like little fat squares just like um, it would be if you were eating some beef short ribs. Don't worry about if your cuts aren't perfect because we are going to cut this again once it gets done baking. So after you have all your cuts, um, you're going to end up with about 16 pieces of short ribs. I'm just going to kind of reposition that. 
kind of make sure your cut's going all the way through. And then we're going to bake this in a 350 degree oven for an hour. And then after it comes out, I'll show you how to make your gravy and your braising liquid that we're going to braise it with. All right. All right, guys. So after the your um, ribs should come out of the oven, they should look like this. Yes, there is one missing. My daughter could not wait until I was done before she tasted it. So we are missing one. If your ribs are not as dark as mine are, and I left them uncovered so they can develop a kind of crust on the outside. If your ribs are not the color of mine, I would suggest that you go ahead and um, brown them on both sides before you add them in the braising liquid, but mine are already browned. So we are going to make some gravy here. I'm going to oh, go ahead and start my my pot, I have a um, cast iron pot that I, Dutch oven that I'm going to put in the um, oven. Now we are going to um, put this in our braising liquid and let it cook for an hour. And that way our um, short ribs will be juicy. They'll be um, rehydrated. They will be just luscious and unctuous and ready to eat so i'm going to go ahead and heat this up we're going to saute some onions and some carrots and some garlic and then to that we are going to add four cups of beefless beef broth and um some flour so just stay tuned and i'll show you the steps we're going to do to get that accomplished all right we are going to go in with our maybe like two tablespoons of oil uh -oh. we're going to saute our carrots our onion and our garlic i didn't bother chopping the garlic up mincing the garlic because it's going to break down in the oven while it's cooking for about an hour so we just want to cook these until they soften and then we're going to add um, about two tablespoons of flour to this and then we're going to add our um, beef broth and we're going to season it up with some bay leaves and some thyme and whatever other seasonings you want to add to that Now that our onions and our garlic is very fragrant, <laughs> fragrant, I'm going to add some, um, just some all-purpose flour, and we're going to make sure that gets coated and mixes with the fat so we won't have any lumps in our gravy. And I didn't measure this, I'm sorry you guys, but it's probably about two tablespoons. But I will put exact measurements for you to follow in the description box. Alright, the next thing we have is a couple of bay leaves. And we're going to add... A little bit of thyme. You can use fresh thyme if you want. I didn't have any. So I am just using some dried. That was maybe a half of a teaspoon of that. Now we're going to go in 
with our beef lips. Beef broth. I like to go in a little bit at a time because I want to make sure that I'm getting those bits of whatever we have at the bottom of the pan and then I just dump the whole thing. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that don't look like no beef favorite supposed to be dark. Hold up, wait a minute. All right, to our pot, we're gonna add some browning. Um, I just got the Grace's, Grace's browning here. So we're just gonna add, maybe well, that was like a teaspoon of that. This is going to thicken up in the oven, so don't worry about it if it's a little thin. Okay, and to that, I'm going to add some brown gravy mix by Sprite um, Salt Supreme. I love this brand of seasoning. It's very inexpensive, and I love it. I'm going to get the uh, we're going to do like a fourth of a cup of that and make sure you whisk that in because that does have some um, thickening agents in it so you don't want that to have any lumps you could have added it when you did your flour but I just added it in right then And if there are any lumps, they'll probably come out in the um, raisin process. All right, now it's the time for you to taste and adjust the seasoning. It's a little bit of white pepper. Oh, that's probably like a half a teaspoonful. A half a teaspoon of onion powder. A half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm not going to add any salt to that because there is enough salt in it already and we're going to add a half a teaspoon of black pepper we set all in and now we are going to gently add in our um, our short ribs our vegan short ribs I'm going to cut the heat off on this because we want it to finish cooking in the oven. Just gently put that in there. Make sure when you take your um, short ribs out the oven that you recut them because some of the pieces may still be together so in order to get a nice clean break on it you're going to need to recut that so let's just take a look at how this is looking on the inside before we even braise it and tenderize it some look at that you can't tell me that doesn't look like a beef rib the marbling effect that the oyster mushrooms gives it 
it's going to add a great flavor to it as well as a nice textural component so now we're going to cover this oh I'm sorry guys we're going to cover this and we're going to put it in the oven for three at 325 for an hour and while we're cooking this we're going to let our cabbage cook in there at the same time so I'm going to show you what you need to get together for your cabbage and as far as your white rice, you can just go ahead and make your white your white rice on the stove or in a um, a rice cooker. Um, <clears throat> and usually for my rice, I put the rice in the pot and then I fill the water up to my first knuckle. That's as far as the water goes. You salt it and you put it on the the um, stove. And once your water runs out and steam stops coming out of the pot your rice is done so all right i'm going to come back and show you what we need to do with the cabbage okay guys we are going to tackle this um cabbage what you're going to need is a whole head of cabbage i just took out the outside leaves that looked kind of funky and washed it off and then i just lined my Baking sheet with the seal pad. Um, you can use parchment paper if you don't have a seal pad. And then you're going to need some garlic powder, some onion powder. This ain't going to focus like I wanted to, but anywho. Some greens seasonings, some nature seasoning, season blend, or any... Um, what you call it? Any all-purpose seasoning that you want. And you're going to need some um, vegan butter. I am using the Earth Balance um, Vegan Buttery Sticks for this recipe. Alright, so we're just going to take the end off the cabbage. And we're going to cut it into like steaks. So... I'm going to take that I think one cabbage makes about four well about at least four maybe six steaks we're going to cut that last one in half. I'm just going to show you what we're going to do to one of them, and then you can do that to the rest of the, um, the cabbage. I'm just going to move these over to the side. And these pieces on the outside, you can just mold those back together once you have your... Um, your cabbage sliced. So I'm just moving these to the the baking sheet here. I think we just barely got enough room for all of them to fit. Okay, and that created um, six cabbage steaks. So we're going to Make sure we get those in there also. Is this focused? Okay. So we're going to do this to both sides of the um, cabbage. You're going to take the butter and you're going to spread the butter on the side of your cabbage. I told y'all this was vegan soul food um, Sundays. You know, we don't cut no corners when we cooking soul food. Whether it be vegan or regular soul food. Okay. Go in with a generous sprinkling of your garlic and your onion powder. 
And then you're gonna go in with your green seasoning. Good thing I bought another one because this one is almost out. And this is one, the one I like by Spice Supreme. This one is really good. So, gonna go in with your green seasoning. And you're gonna do a sprinkle of the nature seasoning or the um, seasoning of your choice. And we're also going to go in with a little black pepper. And you're going to turn this over and put this on your um, baking sheet. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. You can't season one side and not the other. Okay. So I will season the rest of my cabbage um, steaks up. And then I'll come back and show you guys before I put it in the oven. So here is what our cabbage steaks look like um, before we put them in the oven. What we want to do now is roast them in the oven. Um, I am just going to put mine in with the, um, while the vegan beef short ribs are braising. So your cooking times may vary. I'm going to, I think I have like 45 minutes or 40 minutes left. So I'm going to cook them on 325 and I'm going to, um, do 20 minutes on each side but if you're not doing it with your um with your vegan short ribs then you want to put your oven on 450 and you're going to cook cook it on 20 minutes on one side 15 minutes on the other side and then they should be good to go after that but i'm going to go ahead on and just cook them with the um short ribs and then i'll let you guys see how they'll turn out after that okay y'all i have taken the um vegan beef short ribs out of the oven and so this is like the big refill they were in the oven um for an hour at 325 and sorry if the picture looks a little different i am filming on my cell phone Just give y'all a moment of silence for these beef ribs. That looks so good. That looks so good. Now, you can't tell me that you're not going to try this recipe because this looks bomb. All right, let me go ahead and plate up a dish for you guys so you can um, see me taste it. I am just waiting on the cabbage. Um, I had it in the oven for... 40 minutes at 325 because I had it roasting with the short ribs but I went ahead and cranked it up and I put it on um, 525 and I just want it to brown a little bit on the top and then I will plate this up for everybody alright 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 so I got the cabbage out of the oven and I just let it caramelize a little bit on the top because, like I said, I had it slow roasting with the um, the short rib. So I probably put it up under the broiler on 525 for maybe like five minutes and just let it caramelize a little bit on the top. But I'm pretty sure if you do it um, with the original instructions to roast it at 450, 15, 20 minutes on the first side, 15 minutes on the second side, you'll get the same result. Alright, I'm going to plate this up and I will be right back. So yeah, this is the finished product. Like I said, I was, I'm filming on my cell phone, so the quality may not be as good, but you guys get the gist of it. We got our rice, 
our cabbage steaks, our braised short ribs. So, I am going to do you the honor and give it a little taste test. All right. This is what we have all been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, let's go into the rice and the cabbage first, you know, with a little bit of gravy on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The cabbage still has some texture. It's good. Mm. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? That's that braised beef, vegan beef. tender and it has different um, <clears throat> textures going through it you have the chewy with the mushrooms and then you have the added kind of like little fat pieces with the um, the rice paper flour then you have the um, the bean curd sheets that adds a different type of texture as well Oh, very, very, very good. I mean, that's amazing. So, make sure mm, if you make this recipe, post it on your Instagram. Tag me at Bang Bang Soul Bowl so I can see that you guys made it. But I'm telling you, this probably would be the best vegan meat that you have ever had. I'm telling you. Don't sleep on my skills now. Don't sleep on them. But, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And... This is the first of many more Soul Food Sundays to come. Mm. So good. See y'all next time.